Welcome to STM 4 and R, Chapter 6. We're starting to think now about bivariate uh, models for quantitative variables. Uh, just a reminder, we do have the uh, supplementary resource, The Student's Guide to R, available in fine bookstores and also freely available as a PDF. The relevant chapter here you want to be looking at is two quantitative variables, Chapter 5. So scatter plots, association, and correlation, we're actually going to be reviewing and using all the sections in here, including the optional 6.4 straightening scatter plots, the idea of transformations as a way of, of cleaning things up. Start with a model for um, the mean error uh, as a function of time for Atlantic hurricanes, um, and kind of think about this idea of a time plot here. And then more generally, the idea of scatter plots. This is something you've seen before uh, in your high school work or other places. Um, and, but we want to be thinking about characterizing the, the direction, the form, and the uh, strength of relationships as a way of thinking about, um, about things. So there's some nice examples here. Um, we want to kind of work through those. As always, these uh, other ones here with the answers to those questions are really valuable set up. Um, Thinking about how we're actually going to be using notation for this, um, the response variable, or y, the explanatory variable is x, will be the typical ways I'll think about it. I would discourage you from using the independent and dependent variable approach, uh, partly because those words are so used in so many other ways. Correlation, again, common term. You want to really be thinking very carefully about the meaning of that and how things are, are organized. Um, I would definitely encourage you to work through and to kind of think through figure 6.4. This is a great way of thinking about the definition and how it relates to what we saw in the previous chapter in terms of these z-scores. So that's a very valuable, very useful example. Um, um, there is this listing here of finding stuff by hand. That's what your parents would have done. Um, for the most part, we're not going to be doing that. We're going to let R um, calculate things for us. We need to start thinking about assumptions and conditions for correlation. And here we have the quantitative variable, straight enough condition, and the no outliers condition. We'll talk more about those in class. Just checking, as always, please work through the just checking as you proceed. It's a nice example here with the think, plan, show, tell. Aspects of the correlation properties that will be important to be thinking about. There's a nice uh, uh, you know, extension here with Kendall's Tau. We won't be using Kendall's Tau in the course, so that section you can actually leave off. Um, Spearman's row, however, is going to be an important thing that we, that we talk about. It's the correlation of two rank variables, so please read the non-parametric association Spearman row section. You've heard, you've heard, you've heard always the idea that correlation is not equal to causation. We're going to go move beyond that in the course, but it's important to be thinking about this. Uh, we'll talk more about lurking variables and confounding variables in the, um, in the later parts of the course. Correlation tables are a nice uh, way of describing bivariate relationships. So the example here can be very helpful. And then the section closes with the idea of straightening scatter plots and ways that correlation can be used um, for uh, nonlinear relationships as well and introducing this idea of the ladder of powers. So we're going to have a homework problem on this so I would encourage you to kind of take a take a good look. And there's some ways kind of approaches to think about different transformations in an example. As always, the what can go wrong, what happens to good people who do kind of things that they need to think a little bit more about perhaps, um, closes the chapter along with the learning objectives. It's very straightforward to be integrating these uh, approaches in R. So chapter six of the SDM4 in R uh, brings in that hurricane tracking data. Here we're going to be using the xy plot function as a way of generating the scatter plot. And then we can go ahead and do some other, other things with another scatter plot. The correlation function, COR, allows us to uh, calculate the correlation. If we want to calculate something else like Kendall's tau or Spearman's row, uh, we can just go ahead and add those options. Straightening scatter plots, as I said, there'll be an example of this. We start off with something like this for the f-stops example. And then if we use a, um, a transformation here, in, in fact, we're using the mutate function to generate uh, the square of f-stop um, as one of the ladder of powers. And that actually gives us a relationship that's remarkably linear. Once again, I've uh, tried to give you an overview of the reading 
another supplementary materials for chapter 6. Happy statistics!